why would anyone build a city on a sandbar in the first place? Well, let's take a step back in time to early 1800s Texas. Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. Thank you to our video sponsor, The Daily News, bringing you the news since 1842. Support your local newspaper, The Daily News. After the Texas Revolution in 1836, Texas became an independent republic. Almost immediately after the fighting with Mexico stopped, the government of Texas began a new fight, a fight for economic survival. The Texas government began inviting settlers, immigrants, and investors into Texas in order to bolster and stabilize the Texas population and economy. Land investors and the government of Texas had their eye on a little sandbar off the coast of Texas that had been a pirate haven and even a temporary capital during the revolution. The newly formed Texas government would need an efficient connection to the rest of the world, a port. After Texas gained independence from Mexico, confidence in the Texas economy was in shambles. Galveston's rise to economic prominence can be attributed to a strategic confluence of geography, commerce, and visionary entrepreneurs. The establishment of a commercial wharf in Galveston was imperative for the Texas economy. One little sandbar off the coast of Texas had already proven its worth as a natural harbor. The city of Galveston was officially founded in 1839, and almost immediately, investment began to pour in to this little island. There were other Texas ports along the Gulf Coast, but Galveston had the finest natural harbor. And unlike other smaller ports, Galveston was far enough away from potential Mexican attacks. After the Texas Revolution, Mexico wanted their land back. Galveston was perfectly positioned to be the maritime hub of Texas, which had been proven two decades prior, when notable pirate and privateer Jean Lafitte utilized Galveston Island as his outpost. And right where I am standing at the foot of 18th Street and the modern day port of Galveston, I am at the location of the first pier officially built for the port of Galveston, known today as Coons Wharf. The small wooden finger pier, which no longer stands, sat right about here. <laughs> These seagulls are pretty loud. It was built as a finger pier, reaching out to the deeper waters of the harbor. Reaching the deeper water in the middle of the harbor means it could handle larger and larger ships, which was extremely important. The larger the ship, the more cargo you could move. In 1838, Texas Ranger Ephraim McLean won the rights to build a wharf at the foot of 18th Street, which was purchased shortly after by entrepreneur J.C. Kuhn officially naming the pier Coons Wharf, the pivotal development that catalyzed the economic boom in Galveston and contributed significantly to Texas' burgeoning trade landscape. Now there's pretty much nothing we could see of that original Coons Wharf, but the closest we can get is down here between 19th and 20th Street, down here on the harbor at the Mosquito Fleet. And the dock down here is a good example of what all of the Port of Galveston's wharves would have looked like. Long, wooden, and creaky. Coons Wharf was completed in 1840, which was extremely important for getting goods in and out of Texas. And with a direct connection to the Gulf of Mexico, Texas could ship any goods to anywhere in the world, including other parts of the United States. Galveston, as a barrier island, had limited agricultural or industrial resources and naturally steered its focus towards commerce. And Avenue B, now known as the Strand, became a vital area for Texas trade. Shortly after Coons Wharf was established, other wharves were built along the waterfront. In fact, they were built so quickly that sourcing lumber was a problem. The stumps of palmetto trees were used as the base of many of these wharfs, even naming one of them Palmetto Wharf. The establishment of Coons Wharf and the wharves that followed represented an early manifestation of Galveston's relentless pursuit of commerce. As the port of Galveston officially opened up, more and more people were moving to Galveston. And even through the 1840s and 50s, the port of Galveston was growing at around 50% per year, an astonishing amount of growth. And even with just three to 4,000 people, it made Galveston one of the richest and most populous cities in Texas. The 1850s witnessed significant growth. Warehouses, office space, shipping lines, homes, stores, infrastructure, Galveston's economy and population was growing fast. And right in the middle of all this growth, Coons Wharf. All of these docks were privately owned and operated until 1854, when the Galveston Wharf and Cotton Press Company was established, consolidating the management of each of these docks and taking a step towards enhancing port facilities. The company sought to attract new business and exports, 
and with a growing population in Texas, the Galveston Wharf Company secured direct trade routes to cities like Boston and New York and countries in the Caribbean and Europe. With Galveston's global connectivity and proximity to the navigable river systems of Texas, it put Galveston right in the middle of most imports and exports through Texas, earning Galveston the moniker, the Octopus of the Gulf. If you're ever walking around downtown Galveston and end up on 20th and Harborside, come check out this historical marker for Coons Wharf. The company, William Henley & Co., began operating the Texas and New York packet line from Coons Wharf, shipping directly between Galveston and New York City. A group of investors purchased Coons Wharf down at the foot of 18th Street and built this building right here on 20th and Strand, the Henley Building. In 1855, construction began on Henley Row. Located on 20th and Strand, it is the oldest commercial structure on the street. Henley Row became the offices and warehouse for Coons Wharf. Texas was, of course, a country and state where slavery was legal up until the end of the Civil War. There were enslaved people in Galveston and the port was used in the slave trade, which leads us to the Civil War. During the Civil War, this little sandbar was fought over and blockaded by the Union Navy throughout the entire Civil War. And as many of you may know, it's even where slavery ended in Texas on June 19, 1865. Coons Wharf played a role during the Civil War in one of the most famous Texas battles, the Battle of Galveston. The battle took place between Coons Wharf and one of the oldest commercial structures in Galveston. This building right here will become one of the most famous battlegrounds in Texas. Now in the 1850s and into the 1860s, shipping cotton out of Texas was very important for the economy of Texas and ended up being very important funding the Confederacy. As the Civil War broke out, along with other Confederate ports along the Gulf Coast, Galveston became a target for Union blockades. As the Union started to blockade Galveston, blockade runners were hired to move cotton for the Confederacy out of the port of Galveston. Now in October of 1862, the Union Navy ended up capturing the port of Galveston. One of my favorite subjects, which is Civil War things connected with Galveston, the Battle of Galveston at the corner of 20th and Strand. Galveston was basically surrendered to the Union in October of 1862 without a fight. Considering this building was built in 1859, this building was right here, just a couple hundred yards away from where the Union ships would have docked here in Galveston. Now, for the Confederacy, this was a problem, as this took away the Confederacy's ability to ship cotton out of this major port. In the fall of 1862, the Confederate leadership at Richmond were just infuriated by this decision to abandon Galveston Island. General John Bankhead Magruder gets to Houston in November of 1862 and he launches one of the wildest battle plans of the entire Civil War on New Year's Eve between December 31st of 1862, January 1st of 1863. So the Confederacy mounted an attack on January 1st, 1863 the same day that Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. He's gonna sneak guns over from mainland over the railroad bridge, take them to the waterfront and fire them out at the ships in the harbor. Then he's gonna have a waiting charge against some of the Union troops that are on a wharf. And then he's gonna have some improvised gunboats that he's made out of cotton steamboats coming from Houston. Then he loads up with big bales of cotton and they will put these cotton bales all along the upper structures of these vessels to provide some armament, and in particular for the men that are behind that armament. And all this is gonna happen in the middle of the night. The Confederacy snuck onto the island overnight, mounted cannons in the second floor in these windows up here to fire at the Union Navy. This incredibly bold plan, which involved basically firing a number of cannons from the waterfront over on the Strand area and even toward the water from there. Now there are other buildings that had cannons mounted in them, but most of them have been long gone. But the Henley Building can tie us back to the Battle of Galveston, making this the official start of the Battle of Galveston. Now a lot of people don't realize that here on 20th and Strand, we are standing on a Civil War battleground. A little bit of Civil War battle damage here on the Henley Building, right up here. So next time you are over here on 20th and Strand, come by the seventh column on the 20th Street side, come check this out. This damage is more than likely from one of the vessels that was docked at Coonsworth. So why would anyone build a city on a sandbar in the first place? 
Yes, we have hurricanes. Yes, it's hot in the summertime, but we live on an island that is literally connected to the rest of the world through the Gulf of Mexico, right here through the port of Galveston. And when we put that into context through the founding of Coons Wharf, the port of Galveston and building a nation, it kind of makes a little more sense why so many people moved here in the early and mid 1800s. You want to be where the economy is, even if it's on a hurricane prone sandbar. Coons Wharf, which today is long gone, was a pivotal driver in the Texas economy, but we can still visit some fascinating associated sites here on the island. Although it was a small dock by today's standards, it connected Galveston to East Coast ports like Boston and New York and the rest of the world. And it was even the site of a major civil war battle. It just goes to show even if there's nothing tangible left of a historical site, it can still be appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on all social media. We are everywhere. And if you haven't yet, go check out the podcast. You can find that on all podcast platforms. We have hours and hours of historical content on that podcast feed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Galveston Unscripted. I'm off to enjoy the sunset.